Well, hello, YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. Mike here. Got the Mighty Mill out again. Now, not too long ago, I did a... Uh, well, I didn't do an unboxing video on this. I probably should have. But I did sort of a review video on it. It's, uh, it's a mini flail mill used for sampling um, gold ore. And eventually, I'm going to be using this out in the field... But uh, what I'm going to use it for today is I'm going to use it to grind up some gold ore I sent home from the field because I did not have this at the time. You know, I can use this in the field in the future. I can just grind up gold ore on the spot, you know, where I find it and test it. But I didn't have this, so I've been sending stuff home from my travels out west. And here I've got a couple of uh, bags of ore. Well, a bag and a bucket of ore. Um, these are from two different gold veins that my wife and I sampled when we were out in Wyoming. We were up in the mountains, and um, I found a gold vein out there sticking out of the rock. Actually, a couple of them. One a couple feet above the other. And um, I sampled one, and Leslie sampled the other one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to crush up some of this ore in the Mighty Mill. Um, roughly equal amounts from both veins and uh, we're going to pan it out and see if there's anything good in it because the next time we're out there we can go back and we can collect more of this stuff if there's good gold in it. So uh, let me get started. I'll show you how the Mighty Mill works to get a better idea just how the Mighty Mill works. You can check out that earlier video I referenced. And um, I'll talk about also where we found this stuff as we're going along, okay? And I think I'm going to do some of Leslie's first. Move my bucket out of the way here. Uh, we'll grind up some of Leslie's ore first, and ladies first. We'll try that, and then uh, we'll do the stuff I I sampled, and we'll see how it goes. So the Mighty Mill has uh, three hardened uh, D-ring hammers inside that spin uh, this way insanely fast. And when you put a rock down through the uh, the Grizzly there, it goes down inside. And when you hit the uh, it, it's turned by a, an angle grinder, by the way. And when you turn on the angle grinder, it pulverizes that rock almost instantly. So that rock is now dust in there. We put a couple of other, couple more small rocks in and pulverize them. And we will just keep this up until I get a decent sized sample done that we can go over and pan out. Get a decent sized sample of this material. It looks like pretty good material. It came out of a, a heavily mineralized quartz vein up on a hill. It was really hard to climb up to. It was very steep, scree covered slope, and the scree would slide under you as you're trying to climb. And it's like two steps forward, three steps back at times. And uh, my wife had to resort to scooting on her butt to get back down because it was just kind of scary and steep. But, uh, we got our samples and, uh, we didn't get hurt, so, you know. Let's see if that one's going to fit in there. Yep. Some of these, I think, need to be busted up a little bit smaller. I've got a fair amount of stuff in there. Let me empty it out, and then we'll do some more. There's a couple different ways you can empty it out. There's this way, or there's a little door on the front I can take off, but it's quicker to just do that, you know? And that's the kind of grind I'm getting. Pretty fine. There's a few larger chunks in there, but it's actually pretty fine on the hull. That's probably too big to fit in there, but look at the mineralization on that. We got iron rusty stuff, we got green coppery stuff, looks like malachite there. Got some black sulfides too. I might have to bust that up piece up smaller to fit in there. I got some smaller pieces in here that'll go. You want to see that kind of mineralization on the stuff you're running. There might just be gold in there. And 
so far the Mighty Mill has handled everything I've dumped in it. And this is hard, hard, hard quartz, let me tell you. It took a lot of hammering to get the stuff this small. From the chunks we pulled out of the hill. bit more and then we'll pan that out and see if there's anything good in it. That might be too big. There's some extreme violence going on inside this thing as you can tell by turning those hard quartz rocks into this fine dust. That's probably too big to fit. Some of these definitely going to have to be reworked to fit in there. That's got a lot of nice sulfides in it. Let's see if it'll fit. One or two more pieces, and then we'll head over and pan it out. Good. Make sure it's as powdered as it can be. Dump it out. as much of it out as I can so we don't have to worry about cross-contamination between this and the next sample. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Let's go pan this out. See if my wife found anything good in the vein she was sampling. Okay, I think I got everything I need here. I got my favorite pan, my snuffer bottle, some jet dry for in the water. Break up the surface tension. Got my loop so we can look and see if we got anything good in there. Let me transfer this stuff to my favorite pan here. And then we will commence the panning. See if we can find anything good in it. All right, here we go. Let me get this stuff good and wet. I'm gonna get my hands down in here and mix this up really thoroughly because that mighty mill some of this stuff is fine as talcum powder. It's crushed that quartz up so fine. And uh, it's so fine it's actually a little bit hydrophobic. So you got to kind of mix it up and break up the clods in here. You don't want to have any dry material in your pan. You want it all good and wet. So you get some liquefaction going when you agitate it like this. You want the heavy stuff to settle to the bottom. That would be any free gold, any sulfides. And we'll just sort of wash some of the stuff off the top. Stop, we'll agitate some more. Agitate, agitate. This is a pretty good sized sample. We should be able to see if there's anything good in here, I think. I mean, I can bust up some of those larger pieces and run some more if it looks like there's a possibility that there's something good here. Like I say, we can go back and we can get more out of that vein. What I should do is go back with a uh, gasoline powered vacuum. If there's, if there's gold in this, I, what I should do is go back with a gasoline powered vacuum and vacuum all the dust and uh, um, debris from around that vein too and pan it out. But well, first, let's see if there's anything at all there. I mean, it sure looks good. There's a lot of mineralization in that quartz. A lot of sulfides, a lot of rust. It's like copper staining. It's, it's everything you want to see. 
but that's no guarantee that there's actually any gold in this, so that's why we sample. <clears throat> We're getting down to it now. Yeah, there's a few large chunks. Make it through the mighty mill. But for the most part, it does a pretty good job of uh, pulverizing those hard quartz rocks. Let's have a look here and see if there's anything good in this stuff. Only a lot of sulfides for sure. Huh. I'll have to get my loop out and take a look at that. See what we got there. Well, what do you know? We got some gold. Let me see if I can get a close-up of it with my phone camera. It's pretty small, but there's definitely some free mill gold in this stuff. Let me see if I can get a close-up for you. I don't know if it's showing up or not, but there are some flakes of free mill gold in there. I mean, most of that's sulfides, but there are a few flakes of free mill gold in there. Nice one, Leslie. Good job. All right, we'll have to go back and get some more of that vein you were working on in the future. Okay, so we got a little bit of gold in here. Let me see if I can concentrate it in one place. Let's suck it up with my snuffer bottle here. Got some sulfides too. That's okay. The whole mess can be smelted down. I might have missed a piece there. Yeah, I'll just melt down the whole contents of the snuffer bottle at some time in the future. We'll get that free mill gold and we'll get any gold that's in the sulfides. All right, so let me go back over to the mill and grind up my other sample, the one I took, and we'll see if there's anything good in it. Okay, Leslie's vein was narrower and a couple of feet above the vein I was working on. Let's see if mine has anything good in it. It's a much wider vein. I also got some of the heavily mineralized wall rock from adjacent to the vein too in here because it, it might have some value in it too. Let's grind some of this stuff up and find out. Is that going to go in? some of this wall rock in too so we can kind of get an idea of course I should probably do it separately but get a get sort of a cross section of the whole mineralized area by looking at the wall rock as well as the vein rock Uh, let me dump this stuff out. Let me give it another, another spin and dump it out. Grind up some more. Ooh, look how red that is. I'll show you here in a second. Look how red that is from all of the iron oxide staining this stuff. I don't know how well that's showing up. But some of this stuff is just so red with iron oxide staining. Look how red that is. Wow. Let's see if that piece will go in. I think it went in. Let's see. Yep. Let me get 
some more of this wall rock in there too. The wall rock is a lot softer than the quartz. It was quite rotten. So this thing really doesn't even struggle to bust it up. Probably too big to fit. Let's see if that. Okay, dump this out again. Do a little bit more. Wow, that's really red. Hope that's going to equate to uh, some gold. Let's see. Rusty quartz is generally a good sign. Throw some more wall rock in there. It has no trouble at all with the wall rock. Like it's not even there. With the quartz. That makes a noise. That had some nice green malachite on it, that piece. Okay, that should be enough for a good test. Get this dumped out. And we'll head over and pan it out if I found anything good. If I need to take my wife with me all the time. She's my good luck charm. She's gonna find gold. She's definitely gonna be my good luck charm. Okay, let's go pan. Okay, let's get this stuff panned out. Same thing again. Get in here and make sure it's all good and wet. There's no dry spots, no clumps, no lumps. Wow, look how red that is. The vein I was sampling really was very rusty in places. Very rusty. There's a lot of oxidation there. Where those iron sulfides had oxidized away. Hopefully, they left some gold behind when they did. Let's find out here. And that, that oxidation extended not just through the quartz vein, but into the wall rock on one side, which is why I took some. It was very easy because that wall rock was all rotten, falling apart. I could pick it out with my hands. I didn't even need to use my rock hammer, really. It was so rotten and falling apart and heavily mineralized. quartz vein itself was pretty rotten and falling apart in places too. Very well weathered. That's why there's so much rust here. The sulfides in it have had a chance to oxidize. And now we're getting down to it. Make sure that gold stays down on the bottom if there's any there. I don't want to wash it out. The gold and the heavy minerals way down on the bottom with some good agitation there. Then wash the light stuff off the top. Some big chunks in here again. Yeah, a few big chunks. On the whole though, that, that mighty mill does a really good job of pulverizing this rock. It is hard rock too. The quartz, oh my goodness. Some of the samples we got I knew were way too big to fit in the mighty mill. I wailed away on them with a hammer for the longest time trying to bust them up. 
so they'd fit through the grizzly on the mighty mill and you saw that it just takes you know a second or so for the mighty mill to turn that stuff into dust I'll put a link in the description of this video to the eBay seller who sells them he makes them in batches and sells them on eBay I'm not making any money off the link um, ooh. what the heck is that some shiny green stuff in here we got a few gemstones in here too but anyway he makes the mighty mills in batches and as soon as he announces a new batch you better order it because they sell immediately they're very very popular because they work very very well as you can see you know few chunks there yeah, there's a lot of shiny green stuff in here. I don't know what that is. Huh. Let's see if we can get down to the last little bit here and see if there's any free mill gold in it like there was in the last... in the last pan. I think I see some. Let me uh, see if I can uh, move it all into one place. Tell you what, though, I think Leslie's had more gold in it. Oh yeah, we definitely got some free mill gold in here. There's one fairly big chunk and a few tiny ones. Let me see if I can get you a close up with my phone camera out in the sun, although the sun's gone behind clouds. We'll see how well it works out. Alright. Uh, it's hard to tell on the viewfinder. Really hard to tell on the viewfinder, but right about in the center of the screen right there. Focus, you. Focus. There's a piece of gold. There's a few other little pieces in there in amongst these sulfides so let me get the snuffer bottle out and we'll snuffer up the gold just like we did the other one yep gotta get this gold in my snuffer bottle for safekeeping and all these sulfides too they might contain some gold get everything in one place and suck it all up here all right so I think we found a good spot we'll have to go back to that spot in the future and get some more material like I said I think maybe what I really need to do is take a backpack out there a gasoline powered vacuum and vacuum up all of the dust um, and debris from around that uh, vein too and then pan it out. I'll bet there'll be a lot of free gold in it from that vein just sitting up there disintegrating on the side of that mountain for millions of years. There's probably a lot of stuff in the in the soil and dust around the base of that vein. Well that was a lot of fun and we found some gold. I got a lot more samples to run through that we have mailed back home from out west and uh, Next time I go out west, I'm taking the Mighty Mill with me, and I can run it right there on a battery-powered angle grinder and pan in a tub of water in the back of my truck, and I can sample stuff on the spot, and I'll know whether there's gold in it. If there is, I can back the truck up and load it up. I won't have to mail stuff home and test it weeks or months later, so that's going to be a big help. So anyway... If you uh, found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. I've got more samples to test in the future. There'll be more of the Mighty Mill. I've got my own flail mill that I'm working on. That'll be showing up in the future. And got lots of other gold-related videos on this channel. So subscribe to see those future videos. Press the little bell icon. YouTube wants you to press to be notified when new videos come out. As a subscriber, you'll be notified every time I release a new video if you press that bell icon. Check out my second channel, Electric Geek 64. Good stuff going on there. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. Bye.